Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about deserving God's love. But before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be notified whenever we post new videos to the channel. So the question that I'm talking about today is, do I deserve God's love? So I put the question on Facebook uh, a week or two ago just to see what the responses I would get and about 65% said no and about 35% said yes we do. So I pose these questions to see what response people are going to have and then develop teachings from that. You see there are various false teachings arising today dealing with God's love, grace, the Holy Spirit, Christ, etc. And we're going to be addressing some of these over the next coming months. The question, it seems simple enough, but the way we answer it, it really determines a lot. For the way we see, it'll determine the way we see grace, our relationship with Christ, and the way that we see God responding to us. To start with, let's define the word deserve. So the definition of the word deserve means to do something or show qualities worthy of reward or punishment. Keep that in mind. So that's an easy one to answer if we look at Scripture. And that's the whole point of this, is that when we start thinking about things such as, do I deserve God's love and talking about his grace and things like that, we have to stay scripturally based, not necessarily emotionally based in what with what we think or what we feel is the right answer, because that's not necessarily true. So if we look at scripture, it's pretty clear. No, we are not deserving of his love. We are not worthy of his love. We are so unlovable. Romans 5, 8 tells us that while we were enemies of God, he demonstrated his love for us, that Christ died for us. So think about that for a minute. Paul writes this dissertation, this, this letter of theology that we call Romans, taking it forward to the churches in Rome, the home churches in Rome. And by the way, about over half of them were led by women, and that's a whole nother discussion. But he lays out his theology. He lays out this entire thing based on Jesus Christ. See, the gospel, the good news, is about Jesus and the sacrifice that God made to bring us back to him. It's not about us. It centers on him. And there's a lot of the so-called gospel we hear today that centers on us. And it makes it man-centered. And it's that man-centered thinking that brings us to that place of, yes, I deserve God's love. So stick with me. Don't turn us off right now. And listen to this whole thing. And I think you'll understand how much freeing it is to accept and understand that the word is correct. We don't deserve it. So Paul writes Romans, and he spends the first five, six chapters explaining the importance and the legality of God's judgment, okay? Now, he wouldn't have done that if we were deserving of God's love, but he spends those first few parts of that letter talking about how we are deserving. Remember what deserve means. Did you do something good or bad? to get what's coming, okay? He spends those first few chapters talking about how we have done and what we have done to deserve God's judgment, okay? So keeping that in mind, think about this. During Jesus' sacrifice on Calvary, Peter denies him. The Jews crucify him. Judas betrays him. The council, Pontius Pilate, they unjustly condemn him. What did Jesus do? He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. See, when we were at our worst, Jesus gave his best. When we least deserve grace, his grace was absolute. When we have nothing to show him, he gives us mercy. He took our nothing to show his mercy for us. God gives us what we least deserve. That's what we call grace, and what withholds what we, what we do deserve. So we need to be careful when we ask God for justice, because if he truly gave us what we just deserve, 
no one could stand. If we think that God should give us what we deserve, we'd utterly all perish. Jesus got what he did not deserve so that we could receive what we do not deserve. And that's not, this isn't fair. We did not get, we do not get what we deserve while he got what he did not deserve. Nowhere in the Bible does life, does it say that life is fair. If life was fair, then Jesus would not have had to die. He was completely innocent and without sin. Yet we who are completely guilty and sinners, because it wasn't fair to Jesus, we can be declared righteous because of his atoning work on the cross. His atoning work. So the conclusion is this. No, we're not deserving. But, an example, our children make mistakes. They'll disobey, but we love them nonetheless. Our love is not conditioned on their behavior. And we may not like their behavior at times, but we love our children. And that is not a love that is conditional. So much greater is that God loves us despite our despicable, sinful nature. And that is a love that is unconditional, not conditioned, even by our willful disobedience. So think about that. Okay? So why does God love us? Well, we would begin with John 3.16 in answering the question of whether God really loves us. And it's a very simple verse, but a very complex statement. Okay? We, we also know that by sure, by, we know this for sure, that he does love us by the same verse. Imagine you have only one child. You only have one son or daughter. And they had to die to ensure the lives of, the lives of other. These people treat your only child in a cruel and unusual manner. They torture him, spit on him pull his hair out, beat him, whip him, scorn him, ridicule him, laugh at him, drive nails into their hands and feet, let them die an illegal, in an illegal trial, testified by false witnesses, and be completely innocent of, ever, of, any, of any wrongdoing. Just imagine that. And if you can imagine that, we're only slightly what the Father had to endure. We know that Jesus suffered the most agonizing death of any human has ever lived, historically, medically speaking. We think of what Jesus went through, but do we ever think what it must have felt like for the righteous Father in heaven? The Father who sacrificed so, so much. When Jesus agonized in the Garden of Gethsemane, it was surely because he had the knowledge that all the sins of humanity, past, present, and future, were being placed on him. So how does this affect the way we interpret grace? Well, here's the point, and this is really, listen, listen to this. Believing I deserve God's love, even I, after I have accepted him as Lord, implies that I can somehow influence that love, positive or negative. Now think about that for a minute. Believing I deserve God's love, even after I've accepted him as Lord, it implies that I can somehow influence that love, positive and negative. Do my actions cause God to love me more or less? If I see myself of deserving that love, then grace is no longer unmerited favor, but it's reduced to a simple human level of favor. And we know that grace is not limited and not based on us. And in the same sense, how could we imagine that his love is deserved? Another point, our relationship with Christ, if based upon the belief, and notice I'm saying belief, not the fact that we deserve his love, and then bad things happen to us, we can begin to question that love. When this happens, doubt, fear, and unworthiness creeps in, and it can begin to take root. And the great thing about accepting that the word of God on face value is this, when I realize I don't deserve his love and he gives it away anyway, not based on me, but totally him. This is totally freeing, and it allows me to accept his love without guilt or feelings of condemnation. Guilt comes from a place of not feeling accepted, 
based on my actions. The freedom here is that I have to accept his love because I know I do not deserve it and he chooses to love me anyway. Think about that for a minute. Guilt from, comes from a place of not feeling accepted based on my actions. The freedom in accepting the fact that I don't deserve his love is that I have to accept it because I know I don't deserve it, but yet he freely chooses to give it to me. It's totally on him, and that is totally free. One of the responses that someone wrote me was that I was putting guilt on people to think if they didn't deserve God's love. But I think it's the other way around. This releases fear, guilt, and understanding that I don't deserve it. I don't. I am sinful by nature. I am sinful from birth. If you think about it with children, when you see a young child take a toy away from another and hit them, that wasn't taught. That's inherent. When a young child lies for the first time, did someone teach them that? No, it's inherent. And even after I come to Christ, he freely gives me his love and grace, not based on anything I deserve, but based on the fact that Jesus Christ paid the price for my sin nature. So it takes that guilt and responsibility away from me. Another person said, well, what about the parable of the, of the prodigal son? And I did a teaching a few months ago about that from the Jewish perspective. And if you haven't watched it, please go back and watch it. Because what you begin to realize is it's a beautiful love story of a father who wants to be loved by two sons for who he is and not what he can do. And he never is. See, the prodigal comes back and he says, Father, treat me like one of your hired men. And what he's saying there is, teach me skills so that I can live. He doesn't accept the father based on who the father is because he's still thinking, I deserve. Good or bad, I deserve. So therefore, my actions will influence it. And the older brother is living that, believing I deserve based on my actions. And the truth is, I don't. God chooses to love you, cherish you, treat you as his own, simply because of who he is and the accepting of the sacrifice of his son on the cross. And that is so freeing. Because when I fail, when I am weak, it doesn't affect. He loves me anyway. When I am strong and victorious, it doesn't affect. He loves me anyway. Because even in my strongest, courageous moment, it is nothing compared to his grace. I don't want to think that I deserve God's love. And I don't want God to think I deserve his love because then he has to look at my actions, good and bad. And even good, they won't measure up. And bad, they certainly don't. I want to accept the word of God for the simplicity of what it says. You know, Jesus said, he called little children. He said, you need to have faith like little children. And in this situation, we do. Accept the fact that God loves you because of who he is, not because of anything you are or what you do. And it is so free. Condemnation, doubt, guilt go out the window because I can come to him as Abba. And by the way, it doesn't mean daddy. It's a mature term that a mature son or daughter would speak to their mature father in respect and in coming into his presence. I can come into his presence knowing that my his love for me is secure because of who he is, not because of anything that I am. So accept the word. Do you deserve God's love? 
No. Thank goodness. Because then it's based on your actions, good or bad. What do I deserve? Eternal damnation and punishment. But because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, I don't get what I deserve. I get what I don't deserve. His grace, his love, his mercy. His, his, his. Not based on me, but based on him. Take these words, take them to heart, let them grow. Search out the word. Don't just take my word for it. Search out the word. See what it says and be freed by it. There's so much false teaching centered on man and I, I, I going around the body of Christ. And this is one of them. God loves us because of who he is, not because of anything we are. Only through accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, taking on his covering, can God look at us as sons and daughters. It's him, always him, not me, always him. And I can be safe and secure in that love. God bless you. See you next time.